Welcome back. In this short video series, we're going to look at diagonalization with eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And so first of all, let's think about what it is that we're dealing with when we're talking about eigenvectors. So an eigenvector is any vector that when multiplied by its square matrix A from which it is a member is transformed only by a scale factor, no rotation. So that's the geometric interpretation. Uh, so we know that if you take an eigenvector and you multiply it by its matrix, what comes out is the eigenvector scaled by a constant, which we just call its eigenvalue. However, what happens if we take a vector that is not necessarily an eigenvector and repeatedly multiply it by A? So with these are very special vectors, obviously, because they're very, very specific and they have to have a certain structure in order for them to produce multiples of themselves on the output side. But what if we don't have an eigenvector? How, how does this scheme apply in the, in the grander picture? So let's consider this matrix A equals 2, 4, 4, 2, which we've considered before. And we found that lambda 1 is 6, V1 is any vector really where these two are the same value. So 1, 1, 2, 2, 5, 5, negative 3, negative 3, all of those will work. Lambda 2 is negative 2, and V2 is any vector in which the two values are the same but opposite. So these are the, the fundamental components. Anytime I plug in any multiple of 1, 1 and I multiply it by the A matrix, I get something that is six times the eigenvector as its output. So that is to say that if I were to multiply this by 2, 2, what I should get out without even carrying out this multiplication, since that's the structure of the eigenvector, um, that should produce 12, 12. And that, again, is the, the reason I know that is because 2, 2 is an eigenvector any situation we observe that where these two components are the same is an eigenvector, and that's just going to get scaled and projected further out. So if 2, 2 is there, then 12, 12 is going to be this vector right here. And that's the beauty of working with eigenvectors. They get scaled but not rotated. Now, we could do the same thing for lambda 2 equals negative 2 and show that if you put in a, ve uh, a vector like negative 1, 1 here, what comes out is 2, negative 2, something that is doubly as large, but the components are switched. So what happens if we take something that's not an eigenvector? So I've just picked an arbitrary vector here, 0 0.10. That's obviously not an eigenvector. The two components are not the same, nor are they opposite signed. So when we begin multiplying by a, so let's say we multiply by a once, we get the vector 0 0.2, 0 0.4. If we multiply 0 0.2, 0 0.4 by the same matrix, that's the same thing as just squaring the a matrix. Recall that this is really just saying a times a times our initial vector. I'll just call that x naught. And so a times x naught is this uh, 0 0.2, 0 0.4. And then when you multiply that by a again, you're going to get 2, 1.6. So far, so good. Uh, we see that the vector is getting longer, and it's starting to point into the first quadrant, whereas this vector here was just along the x-axis. Now it's pointing here, and now it's kind of pointing a little bit farther. And we continue repeating this process, and we're not really quite sure what we're looking for. But as we get to the fifth power and uh, five multiplications by the A matrix and six multiplications, once something interesting is happening here, we see that the, the two values seem to be getting more and more similar. 387, 390, 2336, 2329, um, 13990, 14003. And if we do this to the 20th power, I just skipped a few multiplications here, 20 multiplications by the A vector, so 20 transformations, actually produces a vector where the components are the same. But wait a minute, this looks like an eigenvector. And specifically, that's of the form where the two components are the same, which corresponds to a lambda of 6. So then when we look at, this should be the 21st power, to the 21st power, it also looks like this is an eigenvector. The components 
are pretty much the same. Uh, there are some decimal places later on in this expansion where they're a little bit different, but it takes a while to many decimal places to see that these are actually kind of different numbers, but they're very, very close. And again, it looks like those components are the same, which corresponds to a lambda one of six. Now, so it, it seems to be the case that the vectors are rotating into the direction. So we'll just kind of make an observation here. The vector, after repeated multiplications, repeated multiplications uh, by A, seem to rotate the vector in the direction of V1. Now that's interesting, but what is happening why is this growing by this, 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 uh, what is this growth factor that happens from 1.828 times 10 to the 14th to 1.097 times 10 to the 15th? Well, guess what? If you multiply, if you multiply this guy by 6, then you get exactly this guy here. And similarly, if you multiply, well, these are the same numbers, but if you multiply 1.828 times 10 to the 14th by 6, you get 1.097 times 10 to the 15th. So let's just spend a moment visualizing this before we get ahead of ourselves. So in this visualization, what we have is uh, I have a, you can input a matrix in here, 2, 4, 4, 2, for example. And these are just the components of that matrix. And what we're going to do here is we're going to say, that's the A matrix. We're going to start off with an initial vector of 0 0.10. So there's our short little vector. And every time I increase this, that's just going to take A to a power. So right now, if I were to take A to the 0 power multiplied by this guy, I would get exactly the same thing back. So as I take T equal to 1, if I drag this, that vector right there is consistent with what we obtained in our, uh, our document. And one thing that I want to point out is that, so right now, a to the first times x is the x component is 0.2 and the y component is 0.4. And we look at the rise to run, this 0.4 to 0.2, we get a ratio of y to x of 2. So that's just looking at the vector itself and, and looking at its y component relative to its x component. Uh, also, from a to the first, a to the first times x is 0.2 and 0.4, a squared times x is 2 and 1.6, and we look, when we can kind of see that the multiplier, uh, it's not quite exactly 4 for both components, but uh, this vector to this vector, these have uh, about quadrupled. At least the y, uh, y component has quadrupled, but the x component has not. So we're looking for some consistency as we repeatedly multiply. So watch what happens. As I begin multiplying repeatedly, that vector gets longer and longer, but it's not moving anymore. It seems to be pointing in exactly the same direction after a few multiplications by, by a. So there's a lot of movement at first whenever you're cubing. So a multiplied by a one time, multiplied by a twice, three times, four times, five times. And you can see that that vector stops moving. And look at this. The components, the rise to run of this vector is about one to one. In fact, a to the 20th, there's that number that we saw in the document. Comparing a to the 20th, which is, those are the two components. You can see how very, very close they are. Uh, they're off by about three, uh, they're off by a little bit more than three units. But these numbers are really massive. But the ratio of the y value to the x value is pretty much one, which means that these two values are pretty much equal after 20 multiplications by a. And guess what? From a to the 20th, 20 multiplications by a to 21 multiplications by a, these, both of these numbers here, the x and the y components, have grown by a factor of six. So there's our 
eigenvalue coming into play. Now you can see that that eigenvalue is whenever we only cube it, a squared to a cubed, the values grow by about a factor of seven. And then when we go from t equals three to t equals four, they grow by a factor of about 5.71. But that factor right there from the previous multiplication by a to one more multiplication by a, that ratio gets closer to six. And by about uh, t equals 11, 11 to 12, you can see that that's pretty much growing, that x is pretty much growing by a factor of six, as is that y component. You can see how close those numbers are. They're getting closer to being that one to one ratio. So here's a link to that applet if you would like to play around with it. You can try different matrices in there and see that this matrix itself is not very special. If you picked any other matrix, computed its eigenvalues and eigenvectors, and then looked at the, wow, wait a minute, it seems like there might be an observation we can make here that the direction into which that vector is ultimately going to rotate is going to be into the direction that has the biggest eigenvalue and it's going to go in the direction of that corresponding eigenvector. Notice how it did not move to negative 1, 1, which would have been over in this direction here. It moves in the direction of the eigenvector corresponding to the largest eigenvalue in magnitude, but more on that soon. So you can try any matrix, compute its eigenvectors, and see that if you do many multiplications by A in this applet, that you're going to get something that's closer and closer in direction to the eigenvector pointing in the uh, that has the dominant eigenvalue. So we see that regardless of the vector we start with, repeated multiplication of a or by a causes the vector to move in the direction of the eigenvector corresponding to the dominant eigenvalue, which is the, the eigenvalue of greatest magnitude. So even if it was negative six and positive two, negative six would be considered a dominant eigenvalue uh, because you ignore the sign on it. And you'll see why a little bit later in our next lesson. Furthermore, as the vector rotates in the direction of this eigenvector, successive multiplications cause it to get scaled by the dominant lambda. So why is this happening and is it always true? So you know, we'll get back at this in the next lesson, but to see, we first build the concept of diagonalization of a square matrix A. So here's the theorem. Suppose A is an n by n matrix and it has n linearly independent eigenvectors. So this is not always true that it does, but we're, uh, we're going to only focus on that fact. Then it follows that A can be written as a diagonal decomposition. So A can be factored apart into three matrices, X times D times X inverse. What X contains in it is, is it's the matrix containing eigenvectors as its columns, as its columns, and D is the matrix with the corresponding eigenvalues of A along its diagonal elements and zeros everywhere else. So let's see how this works. A is the, the matrix 2, 4, 4, 2. As a, uh, write this as a diagonal decomposition. So we need to know what the lambdas are. We know that this is 6, V1 was the vector 1, 1 that we chose. This is not a unique decomposition. It all depends on what what values you pick to put in your eigenvector. This is negative two. V2 is the vector negative one, one. And so X is going to contain as its columns the eigenvectors. It does not matter what order you put them in. I'm gonna put one, one as the first column and negative one, one as the second column. And that just means that D needs to have for the one, one vector, the first component in this diagonal is going to be the corresponding eigenvalue. And in the second column, along that same diagonal, negative two is going to be the component in that. And the rest of the values are zero. So you have, this is called a diagonal matrix. Diagonal matrix.
The reason we need linearly independent columns is because this has to have an inverse, and we're going to compute that in the next video. So see you there.